Welcome back to Guitar Discoveries. This week, we're going to discover the top three things I wish I knew when I started playing guitar. Now, if you're a beginner or an intermediate player, I'm confident this info will help move you forward. So stick around and let's do some discovering. Let's jump right in. The top three things I wish I knew when I started playing guitar. Number one, your guitar needs TLC. Now it took me years to understand how important proper guitar care is. The playability of your guitar is gonna have a huge impact on how challenging it is to play and how quickly you can learn. So I'm talking about how hard you have to press down on the strings to get tune, clear sounding notes and chords. So, you know, how difficult it is to switch from one chord to another. And overall, how much pain you'll have to go through on your way to building hand strength, calluses on your fingertips. So your guitar deserves a proper setup. You're going to bring it to a guitar tech or repair person. They're often known as a luthier. And if you don't know of one, look for recommendations on Yelp or ask for a referral from a local music school. Now, depending on the quality and condition of your guitar, a complete setup might cost anywhere between $50 and $100 to get your guitar in its best possible playing condition. I also suggest bringing a set of new strings with you so you can get exactly the type of strings and gauge you want. More on that in a minute. The luthier is gonna put on the new strings and they're gonna adjust your tuners, the truss rod, if your guitar has one. They're gonna check and polish your frets. They're gonna tweak the nut, this area right here. They're gonna tweak the saddle and the bridge. And all those adjustments are gonna determine your guitar's action and intonation. So action is how high the strings are from the frets and therefore, how hard or easy they are to press down and play. So generally you want the strings as low as possible, but without any buzzing or other issues. And then intonation is how accurate the pitch of each note is at every position on the fretboard. So for example, not perfect, but close. This guitar probably needs a setup. So you definitely want to start with fresh strings. I personally recommend coated strings like either Elixirs or D'Addario EXPs or Martin Lifespan. And that's because they keep sounding good much longer. The coating on the strings is going to resist the oils and other gunk from your fingers. And it's going to prevent corrosion, especially if the guitar sits for any period of time. All right, another tip for longer string life, wipe down your strings after each session. Now, I like to use fast fret. This lubricates the strings and it comes with a cloth to wipe off the excess. Would be hard to get out, of course. Pop this off, this little thing, you rub along. And then wipe down with the cloth. Always keep an eye on the condition of your strings over time, because they might need changing after a few weeks or a few months. And when you change them, you're gonna experience just the sheer pleasure of clean, clear tone and less friction when moving your hands around. The last thing I'm gonna lump into the tender, loving care of your guitar is tuning. Get a good digital tuner and check your tuning frequently. So for acoustic guitars, I like either a headstock tuner. I have one here hidden right underneath there. Uh, or a sound hole tuner which tucks right in to the sound hole and is very unobtrusive. Number two thing I wish I knew when I started playing guitar, rhythm guitar, strumming, is more important than lead guitar, single notes. And that's especially true when you're starting out and mostly playing on your own. So a lot of people get inspired to start guitar because of some guitar hero of theirs. You know, they wanna play and sound like, insert guitar god here, who's put in more than 10,000 hours and is a 
jaw-droppingly impressive virtuoso lead guitarist. But here's the thing, for most beginners, trying to play like Eddie Van Halen or Steve Vai or someone like that is just not the best way to advance your skills and stay motivated. And that's because lead guitar generally feels pretty dull and even a little pointless without accompaniment. See, one of the guitar's major features, one of its best features, is that you can strum full chords to accompany yourself and play and sing songs. That is a big advantage over other instruments that are designed only to play single notes in series, like most of the instruments of the orchestra. You know, violin, viola, cello, bass, the woodwinds, the brass. One of the things that makes those instruments a challenge to learn and stay motivated about is that players have to practice them out of context, without other musicians most of the time. And you only get to play and hear single notes, not the sound and the experience of a whole group. Rhythm guitar is like a whole group in and of itself. So rhythm guitar, AKA strumming, is how you're gonna learn to play songs, not just melodies. I always got inspired by practicing chord changes, strumming patterns, and even finger picking patterns by playing along with my favorite records. Keeping up with popular artists helped me become a solid rhythm guitarist pretty quickly. And I also focused a lot on singing. And those two skills, rhythm guitar and singing, have served me well all my life. Keep in mind that a lot of the greatest musicians and songwriters never learned to play lead guitar like the Shredders. I mean, think of John Lennon and Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Perfect examples. Even George Harrison, who was always billed as the Beatles' lead guitarist, he was never a shredder. He played melodic solos, not fast or impressive ones. Okay, finally, the number three thing I wish I knew when I started playing guitar, get and use a capo. This is a capo. Capo is a simple device that clamps across your strings, like this. That is exactly the same way your index finger clamps the strings when you play a bar chord. So a capo lets you change the key of a song without changing the hand positions or chord names. So if you have a lyric sheet with words and chords, you can play the same chord positions on higher frets while you're using a capo. And you can move the capo up or down and change the key of the song so it's in your vocal range and comfortable for you to sing. Now, I do wanna warn you, if you spend time in guitar groups on the web, <laughs> you're gonna run into capo haters. They think using a capo is cheating and that it's an excuse for not learning all your chords and their inversions in the various positions up the neck. Hey, my attitude is don't sweat it because a lot of the best guitarists in the world use capos. And you're gonna have plenty of time during your lifelong learning process to put away the capo if you want and learn the chord inversions if you need to. But as far as music theory goes, each time you move the capo up one fret, so if you can imagine down here, it's like not capoed at all, right? There's G. If you move it up one fret, you're moving it up a half step. So playing in G without a capo, now suddenly capo at the first fret, you've raised the key from G to G sharp. At the second fret, you're in A. Third fret, a sharp or B flat, and so on. Now, if you feel a little lost when I talk about changing keys like this, that's okay for now. Eventually, you're gonna learn more music theory as you need to. You know, you learn it naturally when you start playing with other musicians and you all wanna play in the same key. But when you're playing alone, it doesn't matter what key you're in. You just need to make the song singable to sound as good as possible. So let me give you a quick example. Um, speaking of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. I've just seen a face I can't forget the time or place where we just met. She's just the girl for me and I'm from all the world to see we met. Mm -hmm. Had it been another day. That's probably the perfect key for me. But guess what? Paul McCartney plays it with a capo at the second. He's up a whole step from where I am. So he's playing the same chord positions like this, but he's playing in the key of A. 
so he would be doing I've just seen a face I can't forget the time A place where we just met She's just the girl for me And I want all the world to see we met So, you can see what's happening there. I'm having to sing it quite a bit higher, one whole step up, and it's just because the capo is there. Same hand positions. So I can say the same chords, G, D, C, G, but that's actually now an A, and an E, and a D, and an A. So different chords technically, but the same hand positions. And that's what you need to use a capo for so you can use those hand positions and find the perfect key for your voice. All right, quick recap of the top three things I wish I knew when I started playing guitar. Your guitar needs TLC, so get a guitar tech or luthier involved. Rhythm guitar is more important than lead guitar, at least at the beginning, so work on your strumming and chording until you can play all the songs you love and you're going to shoot ahead of most other beginners. Finally, get and use a capo so you can play any song you want in the key that's most comfortable for you to sing. So those are three simple ways to gain a quick advantage, to stay motivated and keep practicing and ultimately to learn more quickly. Okay, please visit guitardiscoveries.com for all my videos. A lot of what's on my channel is aimed at helping you as a beginning to intermediate guitarist. I have videos about flat picks, and thumb picks, capos, tuners, strings, string lubricants, and on and on and on. My videos are just shortcuts to help you play and sing more confidently. And then when you're ready to record yourself and sound great doing it. I'm just excited you're on the path and I hope I can make that path a little smoother and more fun. All right, please take a second to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell to hear about new videos. Until then, keep on discovering. See you next time.